When I come to Galway, I like to park near Mill Street, where I can idle for a while watching the ducks and the herons on the river before I head into the city centre. Located on the river, at number one Mill Street, is a handsome limestone building, an old converted mill house. Its tall windows overlook the river and the weir, and its red door is always open to the street. The plaque outside reads Cree na Gailiva Resource Centre, St Vincent de Paul, Maureen O'Connell House. One day my curiosity got the better of me, and I decided to call in to find out what happens here. This is what I found. A room full of people from all over the city enjoying lunch together and looking forward to an afternoon's fun. My name is Mary Owens. I work in radio and I was just curious about what goes on in this building. OK, well, you're in Crean O'Galliva Resource Centre and we run clubs and classes for older people. Um, We also have a dinner club on a Monday and a Wednesday for older people and they do a social club afterwards. My name is Maura. My first contact with Crean O'Galliva was through doing a computer course. My name is Justin. I'm originally from Henry Street. So I'm living in Newcastle since I got married. My name is Gronia. I grew up in Clybourne. My social worker introduced me to Brina Gallifa. My name is Hannah. I was born in Glasgow um, from Irish parents. I came to Green Gallifa because I had fibromyalgia. They don't like exercise, so I thought the line dancing would keep me moving. Yes, and uh, I love coming down. It's kind of the highlight of the week, like you know what I mean. I didn't really want to come out because I was staying in my home. I hadn't been very well. And from day one, it was just wonderful. My first impression was the friendship. The first thing that was said to me was, would you like a cup of tea? I was delighted. Yeah, about three years retired, I worked in a canteen, county council. So, um, yeah, I did miss that because I like to be busy. So I need to have something to do all the time. I knew to be on the go. Everyone has a different story about how they came here. Whether it's by dropping by like me, hearing about the centre from other community groups, or getting an introduction from someone involved in the St Vincent de Paul. I was taken along with Sister Nora. She knew I needed to go someplace and I wouldn't go like I wasn't feeling very well and what do you do when you're on your own I was used to walking in and out Salt till but I had lost that like at the time and uh, like she wanted to get my head going so she said I have a lovely place to bring you so I didn't know where I was coming but I was brought in here and it must have been a Monday or a Wednesday because the tables were set and I thought it was a restaurant or something you know I came to see the building, not the social club. I didn't even know they had a social club. So we went upstairs and we went around to all the rooms and this is the the computer classes and the art class and the writers group and the knitting club and I was told all about them and we were just sauntering along casually into each room and I arrived at this store here and I looked in and I saw a crowd of people and Sister Nora said to me she said would you like to come down here and I said what is it and she said it's a social club and she said they have a dinner on Monday and Wednesday and they have the dancing on Friday once a month and various things and she said I remember looking in the door Oh, I said, that's all old people. (laughs) (laughs) And she said, join the club, (laughs) Mona. My name is Loretta Needham, and I'm the manager of Crina Galliva here in Galway City. Back in 2006, members of the Society of Vincent de Paul, volunteer members, got together and decided, after much negotiation with other organisations, that there was a need for a resource centre here in Galway City. 
People come here directly to do classes or come for clubs or social clubs, but generally we would be talking about 350 to 400 people per week, and that would work out probably around 19,000 a year that would actually come through the centre. Money to renovate the derelict mill house and to transform the building into a comfortable and welcoming resource centre came from the Maureen O'Connell Bequest Fund. This fund has also contributed to the centre's running costs since it opened in April 2009 and will continue to do so until 2014. Uh, my name is Loyola, I'm the activities coordinator here with the Older People Services and this is our social club Wednesday afternoon. We're just about to start playing bingo and we've lots of great prizes for the afternoon and then we'll roll on into our other activities, lots of floor games and um, individual prizes, so lots of competition. Wonderful. So tell me, what's on the prize board today for bingo? Well, we have some chocolate and we have some lovely, delicious smelling soap and some household cleaners and that's just the start there could be tea there could be coffee there could be chocolate and um, all appreciated and all loved the game of bingo is the highlight of the afternoon's entertainment tables are being pulled back pencils and wits sharpened and then suddenly everything goes quiet Second game we are playing for one line. First number is seven and two, seventy-two. Five and eight make them wait, number fifty-eight. Six and nine, number sixty-nine, either way up. Big Ben, number ten. Two little ducks, number twenty-two. <laughs> Volunteers and volunteering are the lifeblood of this place and we have up to 70 volunteers very much available to us and we use them on a very, very regular basis. Three and six, number 36. Oh, my name is Margaret Lagara. I come from a small town in the southern part of Sudan. It's called Juba and it's the capital city of southern Sudan. I have uh, lived here in Galway for the last six years. And uh, I live in the Eglinton Hotel. I'm an asylum seeker and I'm waiting to get residency in the country. Living in direct provisions, I realized that it was a place for me to get out and get involved with the community in Galway. And in the beginning, it was a bit nervous for me. I was not sure what I was going to meet in the center, but I just decided to give it a go. And up to now, I have no regrets. We're very, very international volunteers, which all bring huge diversity to the place and also adds a huge intercultural dimension to Queen Agaliva. So not only have we got uh, an intergenerational dimension, but we've got an intercultural dimension. And I really, really can't say enough how much uh, volunteers are appreciated and how much they actually add to Queen Agaliva. Oh, nothing, nothing. To tell you the truth, yeah. I... When I came to the centre, I thought I was the, on the other side that, oh, I'm so lonely and uh, I don't have anything to do all the day. But when I came to the centre and I realised that there are people also who are in the same kind of situation and I realised that I am not alone and we really work together with these people. They understand where I'm coming from. I understand where they're coming from. And we kind of have a meeting place. And when we are there, we just let everything go and we have a good time. And it's really, really a good place to be. Bringing the generations together 
is another one of the centre's aims. Today, students from Galway Community College in Moninagisha are getting to know their new classmates in Cree Nagailava. So my name is Maria Moore and I am an art teacher at Galway Community College and I am coordinator of the Young Hearts Intergenerational Project here in Crina Galeva. And now you might be wondering what an intergenerational project is. That is where we take our transitioners from Goa Community College and we every Tuesday we come to the Crina Galeva Resource Centre and we work with older adults. So what have you been doing then over the last number of weeks? I had been working in clay, uh, a little bit of pottery. We had been singing. We have been painting. And the whole thing is really great. It's surprising what you can do when you're asked to do it. Well, we have a really lovely group. I'm always amazed at the youngsters. They are so... um, good at concentrating and uh, mannerly. All foreign students, it is unbelievable. They're, they're a credit to, the, to Ireland. I love the whole atmosphere of the place. The people I have met, I would never have met them except through coming to Crida Galliava. They're happy. There might be different languages but they were able to show their friendship in their own way. So the friendship, the cup of tea, and the whole group together working and laughing is really what makes it for me. The young people that we have in the school, a lot of them are either living far away from grandparents and older members of their families. And if they are from Ireland, sometimes they may have not have contact with them. So there is this kind of disconnect happening and they're missing out on this layer of the generations. So tell me you about where you're from. Uh, I'm from Iraq, uh, originally from Kurdistan. It's a uh, part of northern Iraq. Uh, I go to Monegisha and I've been here eight years and it's very good. I like this. I like Ireland very much. It's very good. And have you been enjoying the intergenerational project? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The intergenerational project is the best project I've done so far in transition year. It's very good. I enjoy it a lot too. It's very good. What do you enjoy about it? Well, the people that we meet, they're very friendly. I like, I like to work with them, you know, I like to work with older people. I, I want to uh, yeah, know about their life, maybe like uh, what happened to their life and all that, so I can learn from them and learn from their mistakes and all that. Too. How have you been getting on here, James, over the last few weeks? It's been really good. We've done different things every week and it was really nice interacting with new people and I find it very, very enjoying and I love coming here every Tuesday. Just doing the art with everyone and every week I'm with a new person and it's nice just to get to talk to them and to meet new people. I'm from the Netherlands, but I live in Ireland um, more than 20 years. You wouldn't think it, you would still hear my accent, I, <laughs> I suppose. I like to be part of this group very much. I think it's important that um, yeah, I have contact with younger people because otherwise I wouldn't have that. And I like the students very much. They are very open and they want to help you and yeah, tell about their uh, way of life and where they come from. The transition years over the year really build up a great relationship with the adults. So much so that they have really um, maintained contact with a lot of the adults because they've discovered that actually a lot of the adults live in the areas where they come from and before the adults would have been invisible to them. And now they go around and they say, oh, there's Mary, or I met Maura, and you'll, you'll meet them in school and they go, are you off to Young Hearts? Oh, is John still there? Or is Maura or Mary still there? Oh, tell them I said hello. Or they'll say, oh, I met Lainey uptown and I carried her bags for her. So they do actually keep, this is an ongoing relationship. So this isn't something that just happens in school. This is kind of having, its little tentacles are kind of weaving out into their lives outside school. So that's been a really, really positive effect on them socially and it really helps them to develop a sense of place that they're not just parachuted in here and left that they actually are 
becoming familiar with not just their peers but people of all generations in their local communities. Today we are playing over words. Inside Amsterdam, a bell tolls musically when the sun rises. Planting 50 daffodils today, have to prepare ground first. Autumn is the time for sweeping leaves. Swimming gracefully in a sea of azure blue on a lazy day. Train station at night, child was walking by himself. This was 10 years ago. On the Cam River, black water hen startled as ducks dive today. In the willow tree, the yellow sun shines so bright as the first snow falls. I love Tuesdays here, learning about syllables every Tuesday. Children in Krakow, you build it from a good place when the rain comes. Looking at the sea, Big waves going up and down in the winter night. Always the best, great things happen there. Great atmosphere during summertime. Barefoot on the seashore, pebbles, seashells and a nutmeg clove. Sunday morning early. So my name is Honza Konvalenka and I'm originally from the Czech Republic. I came to Ireland in 2001. I began my journey in Ireland in Cork uh, and I moved to Galway in 2004. Uh, in Galway I worked uh, for a number of years for an IT company and I studied training and education at NUIG. Um, a few years ago, I found out about Krina Galeva, and that's uh, how I got involved with uh, the volunteering in their organization. The first thing I have to do at the trains, move it up. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be... Uh... Our men's group has been set up to reduce the isolation of men in Galway, to provide safe space for self-expression, socializing and perhaps some personal development. Um, when the group starts, we agree on a, on a ground rules of uh, mutual respect, confidentiality and safety. And then we as a group of men agree what are we going to do for the next two hours. No session is alike. It's very dynamic and it depends on the needs of every individual within the group. What are we going to do? <coughs> It's welcome that, you know, there's no set menu as such. Uh, we do kind of grab a nice balance of what people wish to do, wish they want to share physical exercise. There's plenty of opportunity for reaching for that or sitting in the garden, which is well maintained, it's beautiful. You know, catch a film or just... But I, I think it works, that process works, rather than being kind of institutionalised, no, this week we're going to do this, da, 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 just come in, bowl in, do what you do, and make tea. <laughs> we talk, we um, watch movies, we, we, do, we do certain um, physical activities, uh, we go out to the garden, um, and we also go for walks. This is set soothing soon the brain it's great for uh, relaxation by drawing uh, what I'm going to draw is a Halloween uh, uh, scene I enjoy it I enjoy the interaction uh, with other men I enjoy the opportunities to be part of something bigger than is myself I like to see men enjoy themselves and seeing a little change in their mood when they come and when they leave two hours later. It seems to me that I'm in a position to enable men to connect with each other and to reduce uh, the possible isolation that may, that may happen at some point in their lives. So how long have you been coming here, Larry? Uh, I'm coming here now five years. 
Or would you have seen differences in your own life as a result of coming here? Oh, yeah. And enjoying life to the better. I, I, I don't look at the, the saddest of times at all now. I look at the bright side of life. And how did that happen, do you think? Uh, I was too much alone in, with myself. That's why there was spring the sadness. But when I broke out and met people, I'm happy again. I just stepped in to see you all. I'll only stay a while. I want to see how you're getting on. I want to see you smile. I, think, um, I can clearly say that I'm surprised how much Irish people love to dance, at least those that I'm, uh, that I'm in touch with. Uh, and I really like, now when I speak about the men from our group, uh, the joy they get from singing. There is especially one gentleman who is really good at singing, and whether he sings in Irish or in Italian, it's, it's always a very special treat. And to watch the kettle on the crook as I step up the floor And soon the teapot fill my cup that's far from being small, for your hearts are like the mountains and the homes of Donegal. Society of St. Vincent de Paul is a very much an international society and their mission would really break down into three principles, uh, support and friendship, promoting self-sufficiency and social justice. And how Queen of Oliver fits into every one of those three principles. Uh, number one, uh, the support and friendship is definitely around clubs, classes, our intergenerational programme. It's all about bringing people together, reducing isolation, making friends, establishing social networks. And I, I think the Queen of Oliver do that very well and very much fit into the ethos of the Vincent de Paul. But also around promoting self-sufficiency, which is really, really important and a very strong principle as well. Uh, we actually do stuff that encourages people to gain very practical skills. For example, the Parents Network do workshops on do-it-yourself. They're all up there to Aldi buying uh, tools, I believe, at the moment. They also do very practical things like money advice and budgeting tips. Uh, this keeps changing depending on, on, on their needs. Working for social justice is a very strong part of what Vincent de Paul do nationally and internationally indeed and they have very good policy workers in that area that advocate on the part of people that need their voices heard. And also we would have um, programmes as well around Fauci's job, like English language, that we would be welcoming people in and finding out what their actual issues are and hopefully trying to integrate people into the society and that's the way we fit in. OK, well today we have about 25 students who are all here to practice their English conversation. They're all from different parts of the world. We would have a number of uh, Europeans, a number of Spanish people. We'd have Polish people. We have Lithuanian people. We then go as far as Iraq, South America. And the one thing that uh, I suppose that they're all here for is just to practice their English conversation for two hours. And we have a team of volunteer tutors and their role is to sit with maybe three or four students and then just have conversations. It can be anything from living in Galway, uh, it could be talking about the movies, it could be talking about cooking, it could be talking about different cultures, but the whole purpose is that people are speaking English all the time. There's so much going on in Crina Gailava that it's impossible to see it all. But I can't leave the building without meeting the dancers. Maureen, their tutor, is taking them through a tango. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 Who am I? I'm Maureen. One, two, three, four, I'm on this planet for 78 years. <laughs> and um, I'm a widow. He has seven children. And um, I love dancing, it's my passion. And it keeps me young, well, kind of young. 
John is nearly 82, and he loves dancing. Would, would, you can talk for yourself, John. Would you like to uh, contribute? Um, I get great fun, great companionship, yeah. and good exercise, and I enjoy it very much. I notice that you've lots of female companionship here. You've not much competition as the man in the room, John. Well, normally, Michael was here, and uh, he's competition. <laughs> <laughs> He said one time, he said, you're taking my thunder. <laughs> it's very important to volunteer because, um, especially in the present climate, because what you give, you get back in treble fold, you know. It's just wonderful. And life isn't all about money. We are programmed to think that, but it's not actually. And especially as you get older, it's not important. Your health is important, enjoying life and meeting other people. Six, seven, eight, one.